Now those of you who are seasoned viewers and have seen my videos over the years will know I've tried on many time to make bee habitats. These are tree bumblebees I think we're looking at now, Bombus hypnorum. So these wouldn't use them anyway but they do love this purple vetch in the garden. And oh no actually that's a carder bee, I do apologise. Uh, but you do get tree bumblebees as well. So that's the Bombus pascorum. We do get the Bombus hypnorum here as well, but they love it. They all love this purple vetch. So I've done, I've done these pots which have been repositioned over the, on the garden many times. I've planted them in earth. I've put them in leaves in different positions. I've got over here the concrete bumblebee nests, which I'm, I've put in the middle of the allium here. I've even put injured bees in these, sort of help them recover and then put them up by the entrance, but nothing works. It is so hard to get bees to come to an artificial bee hotel, if, for want of a better word. When I think bee hotel, I always think solitary bees, but it is, a, I guess, a habitat for bumblebees, but they never turn up. So. I keep trying, that's all I can say. You, it's nice for them to have a choice. In the very least, you'll get other bugs in them. But I thought I'd show you what to do to regularly keep those, those bee ha bumblebee habitats in good working order. This is one here that I had for 10 years. This, is, uh, this has been in the garden and it actually had an ant's nest in it. And I thought, you know what, enough is enough. It's made of oak, so it's lasted really well. It's an old piece of skirting board from a house that someone was building and they had loads of bits left over, so I took them. Oak, if you can get it recycled, is a fantastic material, not only for building things like this that need to be in the elements, but also for drilling holes into for solitary bees because they love that hardwood. You might have seen a video where I showed how they prefer knots in wood, which are generally harder and uh, less porous and it, the same is, uh, is is true for solitary bees so if you can get some oak this is a really good material so what have I done here I've I took it all apart re-screwed it all back together there's a bit of warping cleared the old ants nest out gave it a good brush off reworked the mesh here now the mesh so the, they come in the front here I normally spray this with UV spray I don't know if that works but I'm trying to attract them desperately. They go into this antechamber, then they go through this hole and into the main nest area. Now, the, I Googled this originally and copied designs. I may be doing something wrong. This mesh is, is to where the substrate will sit on. It creates good airflow, so it's great for heat if they need to regulate the temperature inside the nest. It's not touching any cold or hot surfaces and not touching any wet surfaces. So you'd normally place that just below the hole here so that they, it creates a bed. Now, what I've always done and whether it works or whether it's right or wrong, maybe someone can tell me, but I've always put cat hair in here. Now this is to make, I guess it's for insulation for them to keep warm and or cold but it, they build the waxy structure of the nest into this hair and it is a natural, it's like rebar in concrete I guess, it creates a very very good structure in which to, uh, to build a nest. Now is it too small that square? I mean it's about 8 by 8 inches by 6 inches high so it's relatively good size. I don't know, I'd love some advice for once I'm not giving it. I think it's a reasonable design. Maybe it's the location I'm not. This time around, once it's all complete and painted, and at the end of this video, I'll again cut to a completed version of it. Uh, maybe I'm not positioning it right, so I'm gonna put it in the sun, in the undergrowth, kind of on a, in the periwinkle, because I always see them. Now I kind of missed the, the right time this year. The queens are already out, and they've already found a home, and, I, and I've seen workers of most species out and about, so, this is kind of for next year, but, um, oh, the roof. Yes, so the roof, I've 
past in the age-old tradition of recycling everything I've got some weatherboard fencing which I've used which is great to make pitches on roofs because you just sort of combine it together and then I've got two floor tiles and glued them on so hopefully that will make a really nice watertight roof because it's always suffered with water ingress in the past luckily it was oak but uh, it's not helped with all the ants and god knows what else has lived in there so this will get all get painted up and i'll cut to that in a moment so here it is all done all painted placed in the garden in an east facing position underneath some hedgerow near some periwinkle hopefully that will encourage the bees it's on stilts at the front because my garden is the worst hilly garden in history so that that keeps it level. I forgot to mention earlier there are three holes there you can see at the bottom for ventilation in the right chamber. There's also another three on the right hand end at the top so hopefully that will help the air circulate and keep the bees cool if they're hot and vice versa I guess. I've also cut and I had some, um, some old tubs, small, small little tubs for screws and I cut the lid with the wood burnishing kit into a shape to surround the entrance hole there on the left in orange. I've seen on videos online people doing this because they think the bees are attracted to it. Now I think bees see in UV um, and wouldn't necessarily see colour but I could be wrong but I'll do anything at this stage to encourage them and just to top it off I've also then rubbed down the, uh, the surface of that orange lid and sprayed it with this which is um, security ultraviolet marking lacquer which is invisible to us but they would see like a flower hopefully I don't know like I say I'll try anything <laughs> at this stage but it's all done it looks lovely I think it's really it's one of those uh, reconditioning jobs that I do every year because sometimes I have to retire habitats because they're past saving because this was oak it was really worth doing and, it, and I think it re looks really nice there of course the uh, the crowning glory will be the bees visiting but who knows keep watching and find out thanks for watching though please like and subscribe and uh, thumbs up all the rest of it really appreciate your support cheers